Okay, so welcome to part one uh, of this tutorial series. Um, in this video, I'm just going to explain the sort of file structure that we're going to be using. I'm also going to create the database as well. Um, and depending on how long that lot takes, um, we will probably get on to coding some of the simple files. Uh, well, there are only four files in this series, um, so there's not too much to do. So hopefully this won't be too long. Although I'm very well aware that I say that for literally everything, and they're usually about six parts. So. Um, file structure is the first thing that I'm going to talk about. Um, uh, generally this is the same basic file structure that I use in sort of all of my videos, so sorry for repeating myself, but has to be done unfortunately. Um, so basically we have these two files here, and these are sort of like the pages, um, and these are the two files that I showed you in the previous part. So we have bad page, which is the page we're using for testing, um, which just sort of causes an error, but that we need to log. Um, obviously this would not normally be just a small page that just causes a random error, it would be like, well, part of your website, a blog or something, you know, any page. Um, the error list page, uh, error list file, is the page where um, where sort of the list of errors was sort of displayed in a sort of fairly formatted kind of way. Um, obviously you can format it however you like, um, at the times, which is something I forgot to do for the <laughs> example. So yeah, that's basically that. And again, like I said before, obviously you wouldn't have the uh, error list page just here, like in your site route, open to the public, because if you did that, what would be the point in the logging of the errors? The point is to hide them. Um, so you'd have that like hidden somewhere and password protected, ideally. So both of these pages include this um, sort of core folder. The core folder will sort of provide the backend only, backend files. There won't be any actual pages or of contents in here if you like. So we just go into this folder, you can see we have this init file. Um, this init file basically sets up the system. So you would do like things like starting a session in here, um, uh, connecting to the database, things that you need that you normally would do on sort of all of the pages and it's just so that you don't have to duplicate lines of code into all the pages. So say if you like wanted to connect to the database on more than one page you would put that in here because then if you say you wanted to change the password or something or make an edit, change like connect to pconnect, something like that um, all you'd have to do is edit this one file instead of going through ow, and editing all of them hopefully you heard that noise, otherwise the owl wouldn't make much sense uh, not sure why I'm saying this so moving back on to what I'm talking about um, init file, uh, good idea because it means less edits if you ever need to change anything and also it means that your pages generally have sort of less PHP code in them uh, and more HTML, which is also good because you want to keep the sort of display type pages uh, for sort of content only layout basically, not loads of logic all over. Um, so then this init file also includes some sort of backend files, um, and by that I mean files that just sort of define functions uh, that we then use on our pages. So uh, this might become a bit more clear as we go through, but uh, basically we've got this ink folder and the init file will include all of the files from this folder uh, and therefore they are also included in the pages that include the init file. I hope that's not too confusing. Um, so we just go into this folder. For this uh, tutorial uh, we've just got this error logging .ink .php. Um For like most sites you would have quite a few files in here. Um, so you you know, to, they do various things. Most sites are a bit more complicated than just an error logging system, or like just a blog or whatever. Um, so that's sort of why I use this folder structure, just to demonstrate sort of a nice way to lay out your system, your site, um, so that it's sort of a bit more maintainable. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. So this file here will just provide the three error logging related functions that we're going to be creating, um, and those functions will be used on the various pages, and one of them in the init file. So, uh, to go, that's basically the file structure explained, so to move on to the next thing, I'm just going to go back to the site root where the two pages were. Um, right, so moving on to the next thing, which is the um, database. So I'm going to be creating the database using PHP MyAdmin. <coughs> um, I've already created an empty database, it has no tables, um, and I'm just going to create a new table on this database called Errors. Um, and this um, this I'm saying this table is going to have six columns, and well, that's all you need to do here. 
So you just hit go after you've defined the fact that it's got six columns. So the columns that we're going to have here are error ID, which is just like a unique identification number that you could use to like edit an error if you ever want to do that, or remove a single error from the database. So say if you wanted to keep some errors and you'd accidentally create a load while you were doing making a change, you could just remove those errors using this ID. Um, you wouldn't have to like sort of query for the message and remove those because that'd be slower. So the ID, if you're ever going to have some kind of admin panel, adding a unique ID is usually a good idea. Um, so after the ID, we're going to have the time that the error has occurred. So I'm just going to do error time. Um, after that is error string, which is just the like string where it normally well like I showed you in the um, introduction, the string would be the undefined variable. <coughs> excuse me, the undefined variable unknown part, the actual actual message of the error. Um, after that, we're going to have the file and the um, line number. I'm not sure where I've got this extra column from. Oh well. Error line. Is that everything? Yeah. ID time string file line. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry about this. Um, very unprofessional. But error time here, after that, should have been error type, not string. Sorry. Okay. Um, so going over the columns again, we have the error ID, which is like the unique identification number. Uh, error. This will now be error type. Whoops which is the sort of type of error that has occurred. So this will either be like notice, uh, warning, or error. Uh, warnings are generally more severe. Uh, notice messages don't generally affect the sort of running of your site, your script, but it's still a good idea to sort of fix them if they appear. So then these just need to be moved down. So next is the error time, which is going to be the time that the error occurred, which will probably be quite a useful thing to know. Uh, and you can also use this to sort of trim old errors from the database like, you know, delete errors where error time older than two weeks or whatever. Obviously, you won't actually write that, but that's the logic of it. So after error time comes error string, which is, like I said, the actual string of the error, the actual message. And then after string comes file, which is the full file path that the error occurred in. And after that comes the error line, which is the line number that the error occurred on. So these last three, um, Sorry, these last two are sort of to identify where the error occurred. The error string is just to tell you what went wrong. The error time just tell, tells you when it went wrong. And the error type tells you how severe it was. And the ID is just sort of for admin reasons. So you can easily identify a column, uh, sorry, a row if you ever need to. So like delete a row, like I said. So data types. The ID is going to be an integer because it's going to be a number. The error type is also going to be an integer um, because it is an integer. The error constants um, in PHP are numbers, basically. That's it. <laughs> um, and we're not going to be inserting like a string notice here. We're going to be inserting its value, which I believe is 8. So I'll, that probably will become a little bit more clear as time goes on. But um, So error time uh, is also going to be an integer because we're going to be storing a timestamp. And they are 10-digit number uh, numbers. And it's the number of seconds since a date I always forget. Um, so yeah, that's what we're storing in there. The error string is like a string that actually represents the what's gone wrong. So this obviously won't be an integer as well. This will be a varchar, which is generally what you use for strings. Um, the file is also going to be a varchar because it's also a string. And the line number is an integer again. So now going on to the length or values. For the error ID, um, I'm just going to set six for this. Obviously, if you plan on having like a lot more errors than this, you will need to increase this value slightly. Although this will allow the highest, um, this will allow for that many errors to be logged, six nines. Um, so hopefully, you shouldn't have that many errors going on. Otherwise, well, you'll probably <laughs> you'll probably get this wrong as well. Um, so error type um, the highest value for these um, is three digits long I think. Um, I'm just going to set four. Um, the only ones we're going to be dealing with are the, like the first three because the other ones aren't sort of accessible by the method we use. Um, but like I said, um, 
The reason for this is uh, sort of to prevent people seeing errors. And if you create a parse error, then like that won't be based on something the user has done. That's based on something you've done when you uploaded the script. So a parse error is one of the higher ones that we can't sort of get to. Um, the time, like I said, has to be length 10. String varchar. I'm just going to set the length of this to 512. Uh, that's probably quite excessive. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the longest error message PHP gives is. Um, I know some of them can be quite long, uh, but 512 should pretty much cover everything. Um, the file, well this again, this depends on how your server's set up and how deep in folders your file is. Um, for this I'm just going to set 1 to 8, which again should pretty much cover any file. And the error line, again, this depends on your code. Um, if you have more than like um, if you have about like a thousand line files, you probably need to set uh, like four, which is what I'm going to set. Um, if you had lines that were generally no more than a hundred, you could set three there. So that's uh, the data types and columns set up. So if we just scroll across, the last thing we need to do is set the error ID uh, to be the primary key by doing that, and setting it to auto increment by doing that. So then we just hit the save button, and it will create our table which it has done. Obviously at the moment it's currently empty, uh, so what we need to do next is move on to the actual code. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go over the init file, uh, or the base basics of the init file, and then I'll do the sort of more interesting stuff in the next part, because, um, oops, sorry, I hit my microphone there, uh, because this is getting a little bit long, and, um, well, I don't want you to get um, I don't know, I was going to say bored, I'm not sure how long a video is, makes it more boring. Um, right, so let's move on to the init file, um, and to do that we're going to need to open up our bad page. Um, at the moment it does absolutely nothing, because I have removed the PHP code from it and all of the files. Um, so this is the error list page, or it will be when it's done. Um, there's just some simple HTML code here, and a little bit of CSS for styling. Um, this is not doing anything sort of fancy at all, it's just saying a few font colours and the font type. Um, so obviously you would probably wouldn't want to use this, although uh, I am talking a little bit so you get a good look at it. Um, obviously if you feel like copying it you can pause the video here. Uh, that is a feature of YouTube. Um, so yeah, we're going to be including a file up here, nothing much goes on up here. And then down here we're just going to be looping over the errors and displaying them. So our bad page is currently completely blank, does absolutely nothing. All we're going to be doing here is creating a few errors to show you um, what sort of things can be logged, um, and also including the init file, which is necessary to set up error logging. Um, the error logging backend file is currently empty, and as is the init file. So the init file is what we're going to do first, which is why I came to it last. Um, so the first thing we need to do that's going to happen on all of the pages is connect to the database. So we're going to do that using the MySQL, oops, MySQL connect function. MySQL connection, connect function. Oh god, okay. Connect, right, good. So we can create the database connection. And the first parameter is the server you want to connect to. The second one is the username that you want to connect with, which I always use example user. And the final name, uh, final name, final parameter is the uh, password that you want to connect with, which I always use example pass. Um, after that, we need to tell the MySQL server what the data, what database we need to, um, what database we want to work with, and we do that using the MySQL select DB function. And this takes one parameter, which is the name of the database. Uh, so in this case, it's error log. Oops. Um, that was just from PHP my, my, PHP my admin. That's just what I set. Obviously, yours would be different. So after we've connected to the database, we need to include the backend file, um, and we'll do that by uh, first defining this path variable that we usually do, and this is going to be equal to dir name of the file constant. Uh, just make sure you notice that this is two underscores here, not one, um, and this file constant contains the full server path to the current script, um, the current script that it's actually used in, so it sort of ignores included files and all that nonsense. So this will actually contain the full path to this init file. And the dir name function just removes the file name portion from the file path. 
So what we get in this path variable is just the full server path to the core folder. And then we can use that to include our files. So next we just use the include, sort of not function, include method I guess. And we uh, use this path variable first. Oops, missed a, one of those. Ooh, there we go. So path, which is sort of the full path to the core folder, slash inc slash error logging dot inc dot php not dot oink okay so that's the including done um, there's one more thing that needs to be done in this file but as I've just managed to go vif over 15 minutes I will cover that in the next part and we need to define a few functions first anyway okay so thanks for watching and join me in whatever part comes after this part three I guess um, where I will try and be less thorough <laughs> I feel like I'm sort of going on for it. Anyway, uh, yes, good. Ending right now. Watch the next part.